الشيطان يعدكم الفقر Shaitan promises you impoverishment. This is what shaitan does. You see, shaitan promises you faqr. If you do this, if you give out the best of what you have, you'll be impoverished. Don't do that. Give out that that, the stuff you don't need. يَعِدُكُمْ الْفَقْرِ He promises you poverty. Now, whether you believe in Allah or not, I mean, alhamdulillah, everybody in here believes in Allah. But out there, right, whether you believe in Allah or not, that is still going on. You see, this is the beauty of the Qur'an. The Qur'an applies its reality. It doesn't matter whether or not you believe it or not. It's happening because there's people out there, fear. It's all fear of provision. They're all worried. There was a Newsweek article that showed... Uh, the flood rising, and there were these two people in total state of terror about when all the stocks were crashing. And what did it say? Are you scared yet? (laughs) Have we got you scared yet? Are you scared yet? Right? And they're all scared. I might lose my job. Well, you might die tonight. I mean, that's the way I look at it. If you're going to be anxious, be anxious about something that's really probable that you might not get through the day. If you're going to be anxious, the only real anxiety to have in this world, as far as I can see, is anxiety about death. (laughs) That's the big one. Forget all that other stuff. (laughs) Because there's no guarantee about that one. Right? So why are you going to worry about poverty? That's all he can do. Oh, you might be impoverished. You might lose your job. I might die too. Right? That's the response to shaitan. Can you promise me life? Can you give me a signed contract? And even if he did, don't believe him. Because he's a liar. So shaitan يَعِدُكُمْ الْفَقْرِ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَةِ So he promises you poverty. And then what does he do? وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَةِ Why? Because he needs first to get you anxious. And then he can command you to do something that's, that's bad. Now, if you look at this, Ibn Hazm, the great Andalusian scholar, said that the foundational state of humanity is anxiety. Man was created in anxiety. That's the state of human beings. I mean, it even sounds like anxious. The word, I mean, it does. That's a strong word. I mean, it sounds, it's scary. Hala! <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's the state of human beings. Halua! Halua! Look what the child, he comes out. What is this place? That's the first thing he's thinking. He's looking around. What is this place? I was in this nice place. It was all, I was floating around. It was all cushioned. Right? You bumping up against that nice cushion of the womb. That nice heartbeat. Right? Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. It's it, nice. They were in training with that. They felt comfortable. They had an umbilicus. They didn't have to worry about food. It was coming all the time into the into the uh, the, the the belly. Right? They didn't have to. Now they feel hunger. They want the breast. And then the first thing that happens, they get that cut off. What does you do? <laughs> That's the first thing that happens. And then boom, they slap him on the bottom. Right? Pinch him to get them breathing. Because they're in a state, of, when, you're, when you're in total like that, you can't even breathe. That's what they're at. They're going, and then boom, and they, ah, and they start crying. That's hella. They're in anxiety. That's human being. Look at that. That's how you came into the world. And how do people go out of the world? Right? <laughs> Heart attack. Oh, what's happening? What's going on? No, seriously. Look at human beings. And then everything that happens. Oh my God, you know, I forgot my keys. What? Just relax. <laughs> right? Relax. My wallet. Where, right? You feel, where's my wallet? <laughs> I just, my purse. Where did I put? Why, you, why all that anxiety? That's human beings. It's a pathetic creature. Really, we're pathetic. Right? إِذَا مَسْهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعَ when he gets good, what's he do? Hold it back. 
He won't give out. Why? He's in anxiety. يَعْدُكُمْ الْفَقْرِ See, he's saying, give out. Why won't you give out? Because your, your fear of poverty. إِذَا مَسْهُ الْخَيْرِ مَنُوعًا When good afflicts him, he won't give out. وَإِذَا مَسْهُ الشَّرِ جَزُوعًا Right? Goes into جزع, هلع, منع. Look at that state of human being. It's all fear, worry. Right? So, Ibn Hazm said, the whole foundation of the human being is this state of anxiety. Right? It's all fear. And, and shaitan knows that because he knows us. He has a good knowledge of our psychology. Some of the ulama say that shaitan here means a nafs al-ammara. That it's actually the, 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 the soul. Because the soul is a shaitan as well. Nafs al-ammara is a shaitan. Shaitan in Arabic means the disobedient. Somebody who's in disobedience. There's shaitan al-ins, shaitan al-jinn, and then there's shaitan al-nafs. So this is the promise of shaitan. You're going to be impoverished. Don't give out. Don't give out. That's what he says. Now, Ibn Hazm said, the whole foundation of man's behavior, it can all be interpreted as tard al That's what he said. Tard al That's all human beings are trying to do. Stave off anxiety. He said, every human action that you see, you can interpret it as an attempt to remove anxiety. Why do you eat? The anxiety of hunger. Why do you put on your clothes? The anxiety of cold or the anxiety of humiliation for being naked, right? For exposing yourself. It's all about anxiety. Why do people go out and seek wealth? Anxiety about poverty. Why do people seek love of leadership? Anxiety about feeling like you're insignificant in the world. See, Napoleon is just a massive infant. He wants to go out and conquer the world. Genghis Khan. These are infants that use the world as their crib. And it's all about feeling important. Going to prove to the world who I am. That I'm great, magnificent. Alexander the Great. Conquered the known world by the age of 33. What was driving him? What was, the, what was the drive in him that wanted him to do that? Right. Immortality, Gilgamesh. His attempt at immortality. That's what human beings do. Everything that you see them doing. Why do we seek out friends? Fear of solitude. The anxiety of being alone. Why do people turn on music? Anxiety of silence. Silence creates anxiety. Americans, they've done studies where if they close their eyes and start meditating, a lot of Americans have acute anxiety attacks just from, from meditating. Why do people fear surgery? Loss of consciousness. People are afraid of being helpless. Right? All these things, it's all fear. That's what it is. And shaitan knows that. So, يَعِدُكُمْ الْفَقَرْ because what happens is if you have anxiety, that's when, see, even shahwa, people will fulfill their shahwa. Why? Because fear of missing a pleasure. The anxiety of missing a pleasure. So they'll actually fulfill a pleasure because they're afraid of missing it. There's children, they hate to go to sleep. They don't want to go to sleep. Why? Because they're going to miss something. They want, really, they want to stay awake. That consciousness is amazing. They don't want to go to sleep. That's why it's difficult to put a child down. They'll go until they drop. But to actually get them in bed and have them lie down, it's very difficult to do that because they think they're going to miss something. This is the way human beings are. They're, they're, they have anxiety. Everything's anxiety. It's all anxiety. Hum, hum, hum. Right? Himma is aspiration. It comes from the same root. Anxiety. So your himmas relate to anxiety. Why do, you, why, why do people seek knowledge? Fear of ignorance. Fear of people treating them with contempt. In this culture, it's a big thing in this culture. If you don't have a degree, right? If you don't have a... They don't care even if you have a phony degree. They'll hang a phony degree on the wall. There's people that will pay money to get themselves in who's who. and Why are you wasting your money? You didn't do anything. 
or get to pay a thousand dollars. You can get a thousand dollars and you'll be given some uh, thing that says you're one of the top doctors in America. You can pay it. Hang it in your office. Why are you doing that? You didn't do it. You just had $1,000 to give away to a for-profit organization. You would have been better off giving it to a non-profit organization. And then you really would have been one of the best doctors in America. But only Allah would know. Uh, but you don't want that. You want other people to know. Right? Not enough that Allah knows. Because how does that benefit me in the world? All these benefits people want. It's all trying to get something. Everybody wants what. That's why cynics, because they know themselves so well, they can only interpret everybody else. What's the bottom line? What's his agenda? What's he really trying to get? See, that's a cynic because that's his state. Right? It's from a Greek word, dog-like. That's what a cynic is. They're like dogs. That's why when the munafiqun, see, they wouldn't do anything that they didn't have some worldly benefit for it. They didn't like Isha and Fajr because it was at dark, nobody could see them. When they went to Dhuhr, uh, Asr and Maghrib, people could see them. They say, oh, so-and-so was in the prayer line. But Isha and Fajr, was, it was dark. There was no electricity in Medina. And if it wasn't a moonlit night, they didn't want to go. Nobody would notice they weren't there. Allah would. That's not a major concern. So this is the sickness of the soul. So he says, everybody's just trying to remove this anxiety, this state of hala. Ibn Hazm said that they'll go to great lengths to do this, expend their energy. And he said, and yet they won't be able to get rid of it. Because no matter how much money you have, you want more. The more they get, the more they want. They never get satiated. That's what Imam al-Busiri in the Burda, he said, don't, don't fulfill your appetites thinking that you'll break it. Right? He said, haven't you seen how the, the gourmand, the glutton, only increases in his desire for food the more he eats? That's the nature. The more you get, the more you want. There's a hadith, لا يملأ فاء ابن آدم Nothing will fill the mouth of the son of Adam except the dirt of his grave. That's the only thing. Had he had a, a valley of gold, he just wants another valley of gold. That's Ibn Adam. That's his state. If he has a valley of gold, he wants another valley. He does Right? There's no shiba. Tama. You know, one of the, the grammarians noted that all the letters of tama have circles in them. Ta, ain, uh, meem, and ain. Because he said that's the nature of tama. It's hollow in the middle. It's just always empty. Tama. Just more and more. Yatma. Yatma. And look at shaba, which is to be shaba to. Sheen yatafasha, it spreads out. Ba closes the the hollow, and then ain is the source, the jof. So it gets filled. Right? That's what shaba to. I can't eat anymore. I'm full. Shaba. Right? 